Aloha, and welcome to Is It For Real? This is Greg Dunn, your host. I'm the president and CEO of Hawaii's Better Business Bureau. Today, we're really fortunate to have with us Mr. Jerry Silva, the president and chief volunteer for the AARP of Hawaii. Jerry, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. You know, it's always great to talk with people who have common interests with AARP, and certainly our common interest is, is fraud. We want to make sure that, especially seniors who work for decades, don't get their savings ripped off at the, probably the worst time of their lives. Well, it's really, it's tragic and it's devastating because seniors, unlike working adults, are not able to get the money back once they've lost it. They've earned all they can, and once it's gone, they're, they're truly destitute and in many cases uh, wind up on the streets or indigent and have to rely on their relatives to help take care of them. Absolutely, and that's the human factor that we are concerned about. And, you know, unfortunately, fraud has become more widespread over the last few years. And a big chunk of that is due to technology. So many more people can get your information. So many more people can reach you. And scams, believe me, they abound. Although, I can say this, I haven't gotten a scamming telephone call since uh, two days ago. Well, that's not too bad. I mean, it, it used to be, you know, when the Better Business Bureau was, was started uh, over 100 years ago, uh, the fraudsters would roll into town and they would come to your front door and knock on your door. Uh, at least you had some protection. Now with the Internet, they come right into your living room and, and greet you right at that point of, of where you're the most vulnerable is in the home. You're absolutely right. Well, whether it's telephone or it, it's just amazing that how much information is out there that fraudsters can use. You know, for example, uh, with the Internet, there have been so many data breaches. Uh, for example, a few years ago, eBay was hacked, and the hackers got information for 148,000 people. That's a lot of information. Mm -hmm. uh, a few years later, federal, former federal employees' information was hacked, the Office of Personnel Management. They could go on and on and on with the hacking that's taken place. And frankly, you don't even have to be hacked for your information to become available to fraudsters. There are lots of other ways that they can get it. I think what most people don't realize is that, that we still have this, um, this vision or the sense that we have some semblance of privacy that, uh, you know, especially if you're a retiree and you may not have kept up on the digital revolution and how much of your personal information is stored on other people's computers in other places. It's not like the old days where your information was only in the phone book and you had to worry about people going through the phone book and just calling the number. Now they know your name, your address, your birth date, your social security number, how many times you shopped at the market down the street, your credit card number, your, you know, how much you're, you get in social security every month. And that information can all be used to help target you as a victim. Well, you're absolutely right about that. Your identity is just stored in so many different places, and, and, and you're right. But you know, there's also the low-tech fraud as well. Uh, for example, you get bills in the mail. You send payments out in the mail. And it's not unusual, the prosecutor can tell you that there are groups of people who are basically following the letter carrier and pulling your stuff out of mailboxes. And uh, for example, a credit card bill, it's got information. They know who's there, they know who lives there. They probably know the last four digits of your credit card, and that gives them an opening to actually contact you and get even more. So we think about uh, felons, really, people that commit fraud, financial fraud in particular. You, you have a couple of different types. You've got people that do it remotely, you know, criminal enterprises that use the Internet or the telephone to try and steal money from you. You have folks locally that are looking to take advantage of you right in your own neighborhood. Yeah. It's a human being that is, is running around and taking stuff out of your mailbox. Uh, they're digging through your trash to find information about you. Um, what are some of the tips that the AARP recommends that people do in order to protect themselves from that, that local threat of falling victim to fraud? Well, let's just take several instances. Let's just start off with the mail, okay? It comes in. Ideally, you'd have a lockable mailbox, but if you don't, you want to make sure that you get your mail out of that mailbox quickly. And the one thing you also don't want to do 
is you don't want to put your outgoing mail, especially mail that has checks in their payments, you don't want to put that in your mailbox and put the red flag up because the red flag says, hey, I've got something here that's worth stealing. That kind of draws attention. So the low tech and the high tech part, very, very uh, successful, unfortunately. So it's, it sounds like if um, you know we have some folks at home that that may have an old school mailbox that is either at the, the curbside or on the front of their house. Let's say they haven't moved into a facility or they're not in a condo. Uh, that were, you would recommend that they would install a secured mailbox yes. for incoming mail. Mm -hmm. And we would of course encourage them to look at the Better Business Bureau website to find a reputable contractor to do that work. Uh, and then for the outgoing mail, not to leave the mail in any mailbox with the flag up, but rather take it to the post office. Or post directly. office or the mailboxes that are out there in the community set up by the post office that are secure. That's where you can drop your outgoing mail with your checks in it. Now, what, what do you recommend if someone suspects that their mail may have been taken? Let's say that over the course of a week, they don't get anything in the mail and they start to get worried. What should they do? What does well, they number one, the first thing that anybody should do is probably contact the Postal Service to let them know that that's happened. And then once that's happened, there's a very good possibility that your mail has been diverted. And especially if you have credit card payments, you want to call your credit card company and let them know that there's a possibility of compromise. Because once you contact the credit card companies and you let them know that you're concerned about it, do you then have to worry about any fraudulent charges, uh, as you understand? No, as I understand, no. Uh, and that's a, Now, there is a difference. We're talking credit cards, not right. debit cards. Big difference. Debit cards, you have a huge liability there. If somebody gets your debit card information and they use it and they drain your, your debit account, you're on the hook for that. It's, it's very frightening because that debit card takes cash out of your account. That's real money that you are going to use to pay rent or your mortgage or your bills, and you no longer have access to that money. That's right. Uh, however, if it was a credit card and it was only against your credit line, that's not cash that, that you're missing out of your account. A lot of inconvenience, but you're right. It's not cash that you're missing. So in terms of reaching out to the banks, letting them know that there's that potential issue, what's the next step that someone should do? Are there free credit reports out there that people can pull and take a look at? Or? Absolutely, there are. There are three major uh, companies that monitor your, your credit, and you need to get to them right away and tell them that you may have a problem. And they, they're probably going to start monitoring your account to make sure that there are no unusual charges. But you know, that's something else that you really need to be able to look at. If you're one of these people who gets a credit card bill every month and pays that credit card bill every month, uh, that's not the most efficient way of doing it. First of all, one, you have to monitor your credit card uh, balances. And that means that at least every month, you've got to open up the, the credit card bill, and you should go through item by item to make sure there are no unusual items in there, uh, old school. Now, what's better than that? Well, if you have access to your credit information online, that's even better, because if all you're doing is monitoring your monthly credit card statements, that means a fraudster has as much as 30 days to do all kinds of terrible things. If you can monitor your credit card online more frequently, that helps too. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I got a call from, uh, from the bank that uh, is here locally letting me know that they were concerned about my credit card number, that uh, they, they know that I travel occasionally, but they wanted to know if I had made a, a $3 purchase at a store in Minneapolis and an $8 purchase at a location in Houston on the same day. Uh, and when I said, no, I haven't left Hawaii, they're like, okay, we're going to shut your credit card down. So what's happened is, is when a fraudster gets a hold of a number that they think is live, they're going to go test it and see if it works. So they'll make a small purchase in one place, and then they've sold the card to someone else as well, and so someone else is making a small purchase in another place to test it to see if it works. And then they'll progressively get to the big hit before they, they then start 
you know, shopping for the bigger ticket items. Hey, that's interesting. And the other thing, too, is that once your information is sold, of course, the uh, monitoring uh, system will, will kick in, but maybe only for a year. You know, there are a lot of these huge lists that have been sold, and you're not going to see the results of these for about five years. So it is really a tough predicament to be in. But let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. When your bank called, how did you know it was your bank? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question because even though the number came up and said First Hawaiian, I said, can I get a number and call you back? Yes. And that was the most important yeah. thing is to make sure you get a number to call them back. So verify it that it's really the number. If it's, it's the number that's published on either the bank's website or on the back of your credit card to verify. Absolutely. Whether it's an email, whatever it is, don't deal with the, the person on the other end of that email or the person on the other end of that line. Call back. But let me, uh, let me just kind of run, run this thing through. First of all, uh, if the number pops up and it says on your caller ID says that that is First Hawaiian Bank, it might be, it might not be, because there's something out there called spoofing, which means that the, the fraudster can basically create any caller ID that the fraudster wants. Mm -hmm. So you have to be aware. And uh, if you get a fraudster, uh, just your experience, what, what kinds of things might they do? What kinds of questions might they ask? What might the conversation be like? Well, that, you know, it can be really varied, but what, what we've heard and what we've identified is that normally people are, are fishing for information. They have just enough but they need more. They may say, well, you know, the, we have the last four digits of your social security number. Can you give me the, the remainder of it to verify who you are? Uh, or um, we know that you, you were born in this particular year. Will you verify your actual birth date? Yep. So they're tricking you to try and get you to fill in the blanks, if, if you will, of information that they don't have. And at that point, the best thing that I, I tell everyone, including my, my parents who are, are retired, is hang up the phone. If someone asks you for something that they shouldn't be, just hang up the phone. And it's a, a real challenge because the um, you know, folks that are, are my parents' age and, and a little older were brought up in a time where you were taught to be polite. And if someone called you on the phone, you were to be polite to them. And uh, uh, right out of the AARP's, uh, you know, the con man's playbook, um, they get, they take advantage of that completely. Yes, they absolutely do. We're taught to be polite and we're taught to be respectful and if somebody gives you something, you ought to be able to return the favor. And uh, that kind of takes us into another area and, and that's yeah. the free lunch scam. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> tell us all, tell, tell us about, oh my goodness, great, amazing thing, you've won the Irish sweepstakes. Okay, uh, kind of works like this. Uh, you can get something in the mail, you can get a phone call, you can get email, you know, whatever. But the deal is this, uh, the come on is, you've just won $25,000 and boy could I use $25,000. The only thing you have to do now is there's a handling fee and there are these taxes that we have to pay. So if you will just send us uh, a check send us by Western Union a transfer for $500, then we'll, then we'll mail you a check for $25,000. Well, that's not bad. $500 for $25,000, that's all I have to give? That's right. And by the way, if you can't get to Western Union, there are other ways to do this. You can go down to Long's and you can get, say, an Amazon gift card. And all you have to do is you, you uh, scratch off the numbers on the back, you read the numbers off, and they've got your, whatever it might be, say $250 by doing that. So, you know, the fact that, uh, that, that there are so many ways to get your money is just amazing. So there are a couple of, of red flags that people really should, should key in on. That one, that the, the fraudster is gonna try and get you into the ether where you're not thinking rationally. Yes. You know. If you didn't enter the, the sweepstakes, you can't win the sweepstakes, you know, plain and simple. So that's number one. Number two, if someone asks you for money over the phone, mm -hmm. hang up the phone. Because if they're telling you you have to pay uh, taxes or a prize fee or a handling fee, 
it's a fraud. Hang up the phone. The next thing that is really critical is if someone tells you to keep it a secret. Uh, yes, I can imagine. Oh, sure. I mean, I, I wouldn't want my, uh, my relatives knowing that I got all this money. They'd want to borrow it from me. And yeah, yeah. But yeah. you're right. If it's something that you didn't expect, that should be one of the warning flags. If there's any kind of a charge, there should be warning flags. And, you know, you can get calls from uh, people allegedly representing your bank. One of the biggest ones, and I'm sure you're aware of this, would be the IRS scams. We, we get dozens of reports of that every day at bbb.org backslash scam tracker. You know, at our scam tracker website, we see report after report after report. That's the number one reported scam in the state of Hawaii right now, is the IRS scam. And I, as I understand, you even received a call that you were about to be thrown in jail? Yes, two days ago, literally at 5.25 in the morning, which is a hell of a time for anybody to call me at 5.25 in the morning. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that's exactly what it was. And it, it's a recording that fundamentally said this. This is your last warning. You have to contact us because we are about to sue you for back taxes. Now that's frightening. Yeah. So threatening, frightening. It puts you in fear and gets you off your, off your game a little bit. Well, and the whole thing here is, of course, they've given me a number to call. Number one, if you're going to contact the IRS, don't return the call. <laughs> as a matter of fact, as a matter of policy, if you don't recognize the, uh, the telephone number, absolutely don't don't answer it, don't return calls. No matter what the caller ID says, you want to make very sure that uh, you're not playing on their turf. Absolutely. Uh, now, one of the things I recommend to people, if you think that you may owe money to the IRS or you think that there may be a legitimate issue, go down to the IRS office. There's one in town, it's easy to get to. There are offices on the neighbor islands that you can visit. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and, and talk to someone face to face and understand what the issue may be. Well, the big thing is the IRS doesn't call you to tell you that you're going to be thrown in jail. Exactly. Uh, if you are, potentially, you'll get something in the mail from <laughs> yeah. them. But yeah, you'll really know. You, will, you would have already known that you're in trouble long before you get that, <laughs> that yeah. notification. Well, the other thing that happens is that, you know, one of the other scams going around, of course, is people getting your information and filing tax tax returns on your behalf and setting up the uh, the return mail so that a check is mailed to say their mailbox so there are a number of scams that involve the IRS the big problem is that when you go to file your tax return you've got a problem because it's already been filed it's been filed and the money's been discharged and the IRS is like now you have to prove that that other person was not you exactly right Exactly right. You've got to prove your own identity. Right. So as, as we're talking about ways that people get your identity, we know that a lot of folks as they're heading into retirement uh, may not have saved enough. And so they're looking at, at opportunities to make uh, ends meet uh, and looking for jobs. And all of a sudden someone calls them or sends them an email, congratulations, we have this great work from home opportunity for you that or you know whatever it may be you're online and, and you're you're job hunting and you find the site so of course uh, here's the job the, the scam usually works this way we're just amazed you seem to be custom made for this job but just to be sure how about filling out this application for us and when you fill out the application you've got your birth date on there you've got your social security number on there you've got your address You've got all kinds of stuff on there, and that's easily convertible into a fake credit card. We even saw one that was so sophisticated that they're like, fill out the application, and we also need you to put down your bank account number and routing number so we can electronically deposit your paycheck every, every month. Oh. And people did here in Hawaii. Uh, you know, it's very sophisticated that, that they prey on the fact that you have a need and you believe you found a need. Uh, it's critical that people do their research before they jump in on these. Um, consult many resources because uh, some of the online review sites that are out there right now 
a lot of the reviews are fake. The websites are fake. Mm -hmm. We had a situation on Maui that was reported where a legitimate company's name had been used to set up a fake website that they then were sending emails to college students to get them to sign up to work for that fake website, receiving stolen merchandise, repackaging it and sending it out, and processing payments that, that then the kids got stuck with the with paying the bounce checks on from the the fake money orders that were sent in. Mm -hmm. And you know, and these are these are smart college students that got snookered by someone that set up this this fake site. Well, you know, it can go even farther than that. You you mentioned bounce checks. You know, you can get a check in the mail because you've won whatever you've won. And let's say you've won uh, five thousand dollars. A check in the mail says you're getting six thousand dollars. And the next thing you get is a call saying, by the way, we made a mistake on that check. So you can cash it, but send us a check for the additional $1,000. And that's your money. Of course, when you go to cash that check, the $6,000 check, it bounces. It's not for real. And it takes how long before the bank realizes? They, they chase that, that check all the way back to you know, a bank in the British Virgin Islands or wherever the routing numbers are. And it's it's 15 days before it comes back to Hawaii, and, and all of a sudden, that money is long gone. That's another and part of And you're on the hook for it. Exactly. Well, scamming isn't only local. Scamming is international because you mentioned these offshore organizations. And once your money goes there, you're not going to get it back. Exactly. You know, it's a, you mentioned offshore, and it's something that we haven't really talked about much um, on the program, but it's something that we're seeing more and more of happen in, in Hawaii. As um, our retirees are getting more and more comfortable with being on the internet and email, mm -hmm. that uh, there's, there's a serious problem with isolation and loneliness. Sure. And a lot of our retirees are, are looking for companionship. And there are a lot of great dating websites out there. Yes. And all of a sudden we're getting calls from banks saying we have customers that are coming in and drawing out five and ten and twenty thousand dollar increments to send to their boyfriend or their girlfriend who is in, you know, a, a different country, whether it's the Philippines or Russia or mm -hmm. or whatnot. What do you recommend that, that people think about before they take that step? Well, there are going to be warning signs. Uh, say you sign up for Match.com. Match has got their own safeguards in place. But what a scam, uh, scammer is likely to do is try to get you off the site. In other words, start to correspond with you directly by email. And that's one of the warnings, that, that the direct contact or by telephone. But, but you're absolutely right. After that, uh, you are up against something that's pretty formidable because they will take advantage of the fact that, one, you're lonely and they're going to try to get a profile of you. You know, what are your likes and dislikes? And all of a sudden, they're going to, they're going to become your, your new best friend. And one of the people that I went through uh, training with on uh, Fraud Watch just happened to be from, uh, I guess, recently widowed. And all of a sudden, she met the perfect guy on the website. And all she really needed to do was send him uh, the money for an airline ticket because he lived in New Zealand, and then they live happily ever after. And that, and you know, so that airline ticket all of a sudden got purchased, and you know, then what happened? Did he show up? No, no, he <laughs> no. didn't show up. And that that's the problem. So yeah. yeah, taking advantage of people who are down on their luck, people who are in an emotional state because of. Uh, a sudden death in the family, something like that. These are prime opportunities for fraudsters. Well, and it's, it's particularly difficult because when when you're in that, that Lonely Hearts Club, you're looking for love. You want to believe that you have that emotional connection with someone who's not real. It's a profile that you've met online. I mean, that picture that you see and that, that person you believe you're corresponding with, you know, may not be that that wonderful individual that, that you think it is. No. no. And, and in all likelihood that that entire profile has been created to lure you in and build that trust with you and build the relationship so that you would feel comfortable giving that money over. Very definitely so. 
So, you know, there are different types of scams out there. Those scams that are promising a, a great amount of wealth, uh, that's, that's one of them. An another scam that profiles you and really takes advantage of uh, the psychological uh, profile that you have, but, but so many. The uh, big thing, though, is the opportunities now abound with the Internet, with telecommunications. So you have to be watchful just about every day. So um, as, as we look at, we've talked about ways that people have been, have, can protect themselves. What are some of the ways that people could get involved with the AARP if they wanted to volunteer? I mean, you told me you lead a group of like 400 volunteers in the state of Hawaii. So let's, let's talk about that for a minute. Well, yeah. We're, well, first of all, we are a large nonprofit organization. I think you definitely need to know that. And uh, our, primary, our primary purpose for being is to help people who are 50-plus lead better, more fulfilling lives. And much of this, many of our programs, are done with volunteers. For example, uh, periodically, we have free movies for grown-ups, and one, you go to our website and it'll tell you all about that. But the thing is, it takes staffing to put these together. And we're very fortunate that we have staffers who do this for us, not staffers, volunteers, a group of about 20 volunteers. But you know what? We could always use a few more. We have other types of things out there. Uh, for example, we do food drives. We do shredding, shredding events. Now, that's a big one. And we try to t time our free shredding events for the period right after taxes because you don't want to throw your material out in the trash. You want it to be shredded. So we do Absolutely. that as well. But everything we do takes volunteers, speakers sitting here talking to you. Yeah. And we've got quite a speakers bureau. But, you know, we're always looking for more. The more volunteers we have, the more we can do. So the best thing that folks can do is go to the AARP website. AARP Hawaii website. A yeah. AARP Hawaii website. Find the information. Send in an email or make a phone call. Talk to a volunteer and yep. get involved in that way. Well, Jerry, it's been uh, very informative. I think that, you know, we've done a, a great job today in helping fill people in on ways they can protect themselves, identifying some of the red flags mm -hmm. of what to watch out for uh, if, uh, you know, to protect yourself from be being a victim of fraud and finding ways to prevent fraud uh, for the future. So thank you for joining us. We very much appreciate your time. One quick commercial. If you want to find out what's going on in fraud, check the BBB website or thank you. Fraud Watch okay. website for AARP. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jerry. And I'm Greg Dunn. I want to thank you for joining us today on Is It For Real? Join us again next time, and aloha.